In today's program, Healing the Spirit, the Soul, and the Body. Can spiritual laws be mixed with natural truths? Our guest today thinks so. She took them and was completely healed of cancer. Paula Black is a woman who lives life to the fullest. After being diagnosed with the advanced stages of breast cancer, doctors told Paula she had three to six months to live. Unwilling to sit idle after the diagnosis, Paula and her husband, Captain Dale Black, researched heavily about the roots of cancer and alternative therapies. Paula approached treating the cancer with a body, soul, and spirit perspective. Now, 17 years later, Paula is helping other cancer patients through her one-of-a-kind cancer cure testimony. Please help me welcome Paula Black. Welcome. Good to have you back. Thank you. So today we're talking about this book, Life, Cancer, and God. You almost died. According to the doctors, you should have died. Yes. How, how long did they give you? Three to six months. Three to six months. In another program, you and I were talking, and you mentioned how that there was so much pressure to do what they said as the experts. Yes. But then you and your husband begin to research what is cancer, why does it happen, and everyone seems to talk as though it's, you know, it's a mystery, but you found real reasons why. Yes. And you begin to change your whole lifestyle. And I thought in today's program, I would love to dive straight in and begin to unpack the things you found, because they might be normal to you and common sense to you, but you know, they're not common sense to them to the majority of the public, they wouldn't be so sick. That's right. So tell me a little bit about what you found in your research about cancer. Well, in learning what cancer is, abnormal cells that multiply in our body and don't die, uh, our immune system is designed to eradicate those cells, but when there's so many and we have a weak immune system, it grows and grows and grows till it forms a tumor and cancer spreads throughout our body. Then we can succumb to it. So a tumor is just a mass of cells that should have died and been cleaned out, but they're not being cleaned out. They're beginning to form this mass. That's right. And in fact, a tumor is just a symptom of cancer. The doctors look at the tumor as the cancer. Yeah. We look at the tumor as the cancer, uh, but it isn't. It's a symptom that you have cancer. The cancer is at the cellular level. A tumor is a, a grouping of those abnormal cells that forms in an area. And that's when it's discovered usually that, oh, now you have cancer and the doctors go after that tumor, but they don't deal with the root problem. Ooh, that's big because when I teach people in leadership, I always teach them if you're solving a problem in your company, your organization, too many people solve symptoms. Mm -hmm. And if you just solve the symptom, yeah. the problem will always right. come back. That's right. So you gotta find the root. Yeah, it's, it's no wonder that cancer repeats itself yeah. in, in people so often because the chemotherapy, the radiation, those shrink fast, the tumor, it's true, because they kill fast growing cells, but there's abnormal cells throughout your body. And the bad thing about that is, is they, chemo and radiation ravage your immune system further. Yeah. And it is your only defense. And you already have a, a sick immune system, a weak immune system, or you wouldn't have cancer in the first place. So, now you're making it sicker and weaker. In your opinion, because this is your opinion. <laughs> I have would, opinions. <laughs> you have, would you ever recommend? Never, 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 no. So there are no cases in your never. mind, regardless of how bad they are, that chemo no. or radiation never. in your mind would be? It's a death sentence. I mean, the worse you are, the worse it is to get it. Um, I mean, there are times if, if you have a tumor pressing on an organ or in a critical area that you may have to have surgery to have it removed, and that can be acceptable, but the chemo and radiation, no. And both chemo and radiation cause cancer. Yeah. Even the American Cancer Society says that. Right. I mean, when I logically thought about putting this poison, and chemo is a derivative of mustard gas formed after World War I and World War II, and they said, wow, people that were exposed to it their fast growing cells died. Maybe we can use this. And it eventually became chemotherapy. And this poison that kills so much of our body, I thought, now I'm already sick. 
and they're going to poison me to the point of near death so they can kill all these cancer cells. <clears throat> so it's a race to kill the yes, cancer the, before, before you. Before I die. <laughs> well, and, and now it's been proven that so many people die of the chemo rather than the cancer that are in treatment. And um, it's a tragedy because we only hear from the big pharmaceutical companies, the yeah. medical system. That's all I had heard. When I had cancer, I didn't know any other way to treat it. I'd never heard of anybody doing anything alternative. Back then it was unheard of. So it was just by the grace of God and his faithfulness to me to, you know, <laughs> John 8, 32 says, and you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. God was faithful to walk me into the truth of understanding the things I needed to understand so that I could walk in the healing benefits that he had provided for me. So uh, learning about the medical system, they, the poor doctors, they're the middlemen. They are trained in medical school that this is the protocol, this is how you treat cancer. They're never taught about nutrition. They're never taught about any other option. I mean, I've, there's, I don't know one doctor who practices that knows any other way but surgery, chemo, radiation, and drugs. Often when people that I know have cancer and they go to the doctor and they talk about other ways, the doctors have these pretty canned answers mm -hmm. like, <clears throat> well, I have no research on that, so I couldn't tell you. Mm -hmm. You know, that would probably be the nicest way they deal with it. Some just laugh at it, some scoff at it, some say very bluntly, you go that way, you're going to die. And yes. it's out of my hands. Yes. So you're right, they're not trained at all. I wonder how much nutrition is even taught to a doctor. Almost none. Almost none. And so if a doctor doesn't do their own research, and why would they? Um, Too busy. Well, they are. Plus, <laughs> the pharmaceutical industry, which is the drug industry, is a $2. billion industry every year. They're in the money-making business. And they literally pay up to $30,000 per physician average per year to propagandize those doctors. This is how you treat it. This is what we have. Here's the newest release. Here's the newest drug. Here's the newest results. <clears throat> and so the doctors are constantly being bombarded with this information that's being funneled from the pharmaceutical company. Well, that's the world's answer. It doesn't work. So you're saying there'd be no money in a doctor <laughs> saying juice carrots, celery, <laughs> and put that on the prescription hand? There'd be no one be getting any money Nobody from that. Nobody would be getting any money. And so the pharmaceuticals spend millions of dollars every year. Uh, I mean, Congress people talk about this. Governors talk about this. Scientists talk about this. They spend millions every year trying to squelch the people that are talking about alternative methods of really? healing that are natural. Oh, yes. How, how would they, they do that? They discredit those people. They attack those people. They attack those people. They sue those people. They do all kinds of things to undermine that message by undermining the person bringing the message. And they, they just constantly bombard the public. Do you public. know the examples of that? You, you've seen it? I've read them, yes. Wow. Yes. Uh, if you go back even as far as like 50 years ago, Max Gerson, you've probably heard of the Gerson therapy, which is a natural therapy that was very effective. He wrote a book called 50 Cancer Cures. Uh, patients that had been, come to him and he treated naturally that were cured of cancer and tuberculosis too, but he, he wrote a book about 50 cancer cures, 50 patients who had cancer cures, all natural. And these were people, many of whom the medical system had thrown away. They'd done all they could do and they were going to die. So he took them, treated them. He was literally poisoned twice the second time it killed him. Uh, to stop him from his research. He was in courts, he had been sued. He, this man was persecuted dramatically. That's just one example. It, the woman who helped me has been persecuted mercilessly. She's a medical doctor, so she is really discredited. Um, so, the pers so the only people who would do it, wouldn't be the government doing it's it. It's the pharmaceutical industry. It's the pharmaceutical industry. Yes. Because I, I hear that quite a bit, but you, you, you sometimes begin to wonder, but that's amazing. It's hard to believe. It is hard to it believe. It is so hard to believe. I had so much trouble believing it. But do not be conformed to this world. That is the world's way. And we have to look past all of the, the way the world does business. And it's, it is about money. It's all money. It is about money. Money, the root, it love may, of money. The, the love of, of money is money. the root of all evil. And it truly is. And it's tragic because people are paying with their lives.
Yeah. But more people make their livelihood on cancer than die from it. As yeah. many as die, it still it, it serves the purpose for more people to live off of it than die from it. I think because of the media and internet and all the things that are going on today, it, it's, it's going to be impossible now because anytime mm -hmm. you want to research something today, wow, yeah. can you ever fight? You I tell people, there's no like my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Yes. So it doesn't say my people perish for a lack of love, a lack of prayer, a lack of faith. It says a lack of That's knowledge. That's right. That is right. So in our day and age, there is no way you can't find <laughs> That's right. the answer. If it's you easy it, now. It is easy. It was hard then, <laughs> but uh, it's all in a book. It's all in a book here. It's so easy still. <laughs> it's more easy. So yeah, um, God is getting the word out. and. You know, I waited 17 years, and, and finally, a few years ago, we lost more family members and friends to cancer. We've lost so many. And God really started just convicting me to write my story. So Dale and I co-wrote this, my husband, uh, because when you have cancer, your family has cancer. I mean, you go through it together. It, it just, it brings it all to one place. Here's all this information. So there it is. I spent months, weeks, weeks and months looking for it, and there it is. Good point. And uh, the, the body of Christ is dying as fast as the world. It's true. And that's what God began to convict me about. He said, get it out there. My body needs to know the truth. They need to not be dying like the world is dying through deception and greed. Very good. And so it was a real uh, motivation to get the story out and try and have a voice. Uh, to let people know there's hope. We're going to take a break right here. When we come back, I want to continue. Let's talk about the things you change. Okay. Maybe we'll talk about water because I hear a lot of controversy of what kind of water to drink and <laughs> is the water, is the bottles leaching into the water and et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. you're going to help us out with that. Okay. We'll be right back with Paula. If you're sick or you haven't been juicing or taking care of yourself, you have poisons in you. Welcome back. My guest today, Paula Black, wrote the book Life, Cancer, and God, looking at how to get healthy, healed, and whole in all three areas, body, soul, right. and spirit. And today we're talking about the body and the things that you did. So you drink a lot of water. I do. Okay. Help me out with this, because I hear people saying RO water, or should you drink uh, spring water? I don't or? get legalistic about things. I just don't. I mean, I, I am not that... What about the chlorine? I, do, I try to avoid chlorine where I can. Fluoride? Can't always. Fluoride's bad, chlorine's bad. You know, they, they put all that stuff in the water, in the public water, so I try to avoid that. So what do you Get drink? a good water filter. Okay, Get good. a good water filter. It takes out the chlorine and all those things. Um, but, and I'll drink bottled water. I know that the plastic has stuff in it that can leach into the water, especially if it's set in hot weather, you know. But sometimes that's what you have available. I drink it. I drink this. I don't even know where this came from. <laughs> but, Trust us. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. It's not about being legalistic and doing every little thing and being in fear about, oh, right. I can't have a drink. I've got to have a drink. What do I do? Um, you do enough right, the body takes care of itself. God, God made us very resilient. And so I just make sure I drink enough water a day. How much is that for you? About 96 ounces a day. How many cups is that? Uh, about 12. eight, 12, Some, eight, uh, depends 12. on how big the glass is. But okay. yeah, 96 ounces a day for me. And so I'm usually drinking water every hour. And uh, I don't have caffeine anymore because that dehydrates me. So I avoid caffeine. Sugar, bad. Cancer loves sugar. 
Really? Uh, it so does. if you're eating a lot of sugar, because you were Not saying you good. had a lot of, you drank a lot of pop. I used to drink a lot of Pepsi. And the, Not the, diet. Loved the sugar. And the sugar in there feeds. Oh, cancer. it does. And aspartame and the artificial sweeteners, so bad for you. So don't go to diet. Uh, but yeah, I, I drank so much soda and it literally, there's not enough fluid in that drink to give your body the water that it needs because your body is having to use more than that much liquid to filter out the caffeine. Someone to said deal that if you drink a cup of coffee, you need two cups of water just to make up for the cup of coffee. You do. That, 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 so <laughs> you have to drink lots and lots of water if you yeah. drink caffeine. Uh, not that caffeine's gonna kill you, it's not. It's right. just, it's hard on you. So you just have to make choices. You can have a cup of coffee in the morning if you want, if you're not sick already. If you're sick already, you, you just avoid everything and you do everything extreme. But now I'm, I'm healthy. I've been healthy 17 years. I'm never gonna get cancer. I juice every day. I drink water a lot because hydration is so important to my cells' health. Uh, when you learn about your cells, I mean, I was never a student. Uh, I didn't like biology. But I have been fascinated by what I've learned about the design of my body and how God created us. It's perfect. It's designed to correct itself. So if I get enough juice and good nutrients in and I avoid a lot of the bad stuff and I don't use the microwave much anymore, very seldom do I use a microwave and I drink lots of water, okay, right there, you've covered most of your bases. We started juicing about a year ago. Good for you. I wish you. I had started sooner. But when I when we finally bought organic, put it in the counter, and I bought one of these juicers that's supposed to squeeze it out instead of cut it out. Uh -huh. So I'm trying to do it uh -huh. all right. I was shocked when I saw how much vegetables mm -hmm. went into one cup that's of juice. Right. I thought I'm drinking a whole week that's right. of what I used to do in vegetables in just one morning. Yeah. So what happens is that juice begins to totally feed every cell in your body mm -hmm. and not going to make you fat either. It doesn't make you fat. I went through 20 pounds a day of carrots. Now that's, that's when you were really sick. When, when I was sick. And a bag of apples, you know, so lots of stuff. But a lot of people think, well, I'll, I do smoothies. That's not the same. When you Why juice, not? yeah, because the smoothies and blending, you have the pulp still in there. When you have pulp in with your juice, your body recognizes the solids. So it sends it down through the digestive system and you don't get as many nutrients out of it and it takes longer and it's harder, it's taxing on your body. When you juice without the solids, no pulp, it goes right into your bloodstream within 20 minutes. So it maximizes your, your nutrient absorption oh. and ministers to your uh, immune system. So you wanna juice on an empty stomach, you don't want anything in your stomach when you juice, and then in 20 minutes, it's in your bloodstream and it's into your cells doing what it's supposed to do. Right, because I had friends that have gone to, uh, when they had cancer, they went to juicing, but they begin to have bowel problems and things. And so I wonder if that was all the pulp oh, that they had. Oh, when you start juicing for the first time, your body is so full of toxins, you get, you feel awful because everything's starting to pull out of your system. All these poisons that have been storing up in your body, if you stay with it, you get past that and then you start feeling really good. You have right. energy and you sleep better and everything's better. But if you're sick or you haven't been juicing or taking care of yourself, you have poisons in you. You just do. So and vegetables are good to take them They out. start bringing that out. They start pulling that stuff out of your system. Now, you talk a little bit as well about um, acid and base balance or alkaline balance. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, uh, alkaline is good, okay. acid is bad. Right. So it, your body uh, reacts uh, to your pH balance. You hear about pH, people that have cancer. I mean, when I had cancer, was doing all this stuff, people were saying, well, what's your pH? What about pH? What about, I didn't even know about pH. Vegetables make you alkaline. Right. So I was doing all this juicing, so I was getting, I was alkaline system. Uh, because of what I was eating and, and drinking. Uh, so I didn't worry about it, but it's since, of course, I've educated myself more and understood what foods are acid, acidic, what foods are alkaline. So what foods are more acidic? Meats, dairy are, are acidic. 
So they make your body they make your body go towards the acidic. They do, and it's funny because before you eat them, they're alkaline, but when they get into your digestive system, they turn acidic. Fruits like oranges, you'd think that's acidic. Yeah, it is before you eat it, but when it goes into your body, it turns alkaline in your system. So it, the, all fruit, the natural fruits. Okay, and so yes, all fruit. Fruit is good. Vegetables are better. Okay. And because fruit has a lot of natural sugar. So you don't want to juice much fruit because it's too much natural sugar into your system at one time. So you want to eat fruit, juice vegetables. Okay. Little tricks. So when it comes to acid, if you begin to lower your, for, the, for those who are really sick, mm -hmm. to, they need to literally do the extreme. They Go do. for it, because your they life's do. depending That's on getting right. rid of the cancer. That's right. But for those who are watching, who just say, okay, you're making me think here, but I don't want to go like crazy, just start the journey. Would you say that? Absolutely. Start with one thing. Just start changing one thing. Uh, start being proactive and changing your habits. Do it a little at a time. But start adding juice. Juice is great. Organic green juice. Do you cook much? I steam vegetables. I even cook meat. I cook fish. Occasionally, I'll cook chicken or beef, but very seldom. I, uh, we eat fish more than anything else as far as meat, but I only cook meat probably twice a week. Okay, so what would you eat if you don't have meat? For mm -hmm. those, cause this is brand new for some people. I mean, sure. Uh, so if you're, what would your diet look like? You'd eat two days of meat, and the other days you wouldn't eat meat? I don't, and my husband's great with that, so I fix the potatoes and vegetables, steamed vegetables, or... Why steamed? Uh, because it keeps them, uh, the more you cook a food, the more the nutrients are drained out of them. So uh, foods that are cooked a lot have very little nutrients, even vegetables. So I, I lightly steam my vegetables. I try not to cook them too Leave much. Leave a little crunchy. Yeah, and there's lots of great recipes. I'm, I'm still busy. Uh, but I sleep eight hours a night. But I'm still busy, so I don't, and I'm not, a, I'm not a homebody. I don't like to cook a lot. I just don't. I, I'd almost rather clean the bathroom than cook. That's just me. <laughs> so, you know, we eat a lot of the same things over and over, but uh, we juice a lot and we'll, we'll eat out. <laughs> right. So it works. But uh, yeah, there's lots of great recipe books out there for um, natural foods, for uh, vegans, if you want to go that extreme, right? Or vegetarian? You don't go that extreme now. I don't. Okay. I, I'm not sick anymore, so I've been able to maintain health without being that extreme. A lot of people c complain about not being able to sleep today. Is there anything you found mm, to help sleep? Yes. What? Uh, no caffeine. Okay. And uh, so much of the time, it's the toxins that we are absorbing that are sitting in our bodies that are causing us not to be able to sleep well. And we just have to get healthier. Uh, people have trouble sleeping all the time. And maybe it's stress. You know, a lot of people are under stress, but your body can release a lot of its stress when you feed it properly. You just, everything begins to change. I know people very closely that have swollen ankles and they don't sleep. And when they start hydrating a lot, the swelling goes away. You know, they think they're retaining water. I shouldn't drink. Yeah. Well, the drinking starts s washing out the toxins, and it's the toxins that cause the swelling. So the water helps them lose the swelling and sleep better. So water is God's gift to us. Do you do any supplements, vitamins, minerals? I do, but not a lot. And, and I try to pick really good, healthy brands so that I... Um, don't have all the fillers and stuff that comes in a lot of the over-the-counter yeah. stuff. Excellent. Well, thank you for being with us today. This has been great. We'll be right back.
Today we're talking about getting healthy and the fact that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. You know, we know that praying is important. We know that taking God's Word and meditating on it is crucial as well. But my people perish for a lack of knowledge can be in every area. And I want to encourage you to get healthy. God only gave you one body. And even God's Word, all through the old and the new, has a lot of teaching on what to eat, what not to eat. It says put a knife to your throat if you're given to too many sweets. And it's, it's an issue that it's going to make us die young. We want to live long. You know, you start to learn something when you hit your 40s, 50s, and 60s, and that's the time when so many people come down with sickness and disease. And now you spend the rest of your life trying to be strong and trying to get healthy when with all that you've learned and all that you know at the top of your game in your career, you could do amazing things for life for God. So let's get healthy. Let's make a decision to spend time in God's Word, but take a look at your lifestyle, take a look at your stress, take a look at the things we've been talking about today. And I want to encourage you, get a hold of the book, Life, Cancer, and God, and go through it and let God guide you in how you can start the journey. You don't have to change everything right now, but change something every week and get on this road to being healthy, vibrant, and really alive for God. Looking for practical spirit contemporary teachings? Leon Fontaine has a timely message that will inspire and encourage you in your faith. Understand God's amazing grace and your authority through Jesus with Leon's four-part series, Amazing Grace, Incredible Faith. Because it's by grace that you're saved. What do we believe God for? Stop believing God for the item, for the article. Stop believing God for the situation to change. And start believing God that you qualify. And start believing God that His grace is abundantly yours. Stay tuned to find out how to get your copy of Amazing Grace, Incredible Faith. We hope you've enjoyed the program today. We would love to have you partner with us. This program goes around the world and we want to get into even more countries and into more front rooms. Become a partner today. Join us and give. If you've enjoyed this episode of The Leon Show, we'd like to give you the opportunity to sow into this important work. The Spirit Contemporary Movement is impacting nations. We rely on the generous support of those who know how crucial it is to spread the message of Christ's love through media. This month, as a thank you for your gift of $45, we would like to send you this four-part audio series, Amazing Grace, Incredible Faith. Your support goes directly to producing and distributing great Christian programming. Your dollars change people's eternities. Join the Spirit Contemporary Movement. Call 1-866-272-LEON or visit spiritcontemporary.com to give securely online. Tomorrow, Leon welcomes Daniel Henderson on the topic of life-transforming prayer. We want to transform our prayer life, but on the other hand, we want to be transformed by our prayer life. But if all you ever do in prayer is seek God's hand, you may miss His face. So that's the idea of a transforming reality.